You're inside the press box. Christian FM Sports presents Inside the Press Box, where we discuss all sports from our favorite high school team to college and pro. Here's your host, Paul Tipton and Gary Paris. Hey, Barrow Nation. Thanks for joining us inside the press box presented by GNC and the Miracle Mile and Barker AC. I'm Paul Tipton along with Gary Paris as we enter in towards week five of high school football. And we'll be talking about Miami Palmetto coming to the Citrus Bowl to take on the Fighting Indians. One of those games that we've had circled on the calendar for quite a while that we thought, yeah, that's going to be a good barometer game to see where Vero is on the season. Right now, your Fighting Indians are 3.5 and 0. Sorry, no, actually 4 and 0. After that win last week, it was only a half a <laughs> half a football. Yeah, so you I know, like just trying to throw that in there. But uh, you know, Vero Beach, we tried Gary like crazy to wait out the the weather situation and uh, managed to get a half a football in. They eventually they just called it at the end of the first half and said, "Enough is enough. Let's just go home." Because particularly on Westwood side, they started mounting up some injuries there. And I think Coach uh, Coquel decided, all right, we, we've got to worry about the rest of our season now. So I think it was probably the best idea. But Vero Beach, again, 21-0 to zero win over Westwood now, 4-0 and on the season, Gary. Uh, tell me about your thoughts from that game. Well, again, it's a tough game. They had two lightning delays. I mean, you go out, you warm up. You get ready, and then all of a sudden, in the middle of your stretching and you're getting throwing the ball and running your uh, pregame uh, conditioning and pregame warm-ups, the lightning alarm goes off. Mm-hmm. So immediately, you've got at least 30 minutes. It turns out to be longer <laughs> than that. So finally, we get back on the field to start the game, try to get it going, and then the alarm goes off again. Yeah. So now another major delay of 45 minutes or so. And so now you're you're almost two hours of delay before you start to play the game. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so finally they get out on the field. Guys are all excited. The officials, Coach Jay told us that West or uh, yeah, Westwood wanted to play this game. Mm-hmm. They wanted to play. Yeah, well, they had been canceled a week before. Yes, had been yeah. canceled a week before. Uh, so Coach Cottell wanted to play it. So did Lenny Jankowski, and so did the officials. And so the game got underway. And and, and it really, it was, uh, I don't want to say sloppy anyway, but it was a game where you knew Vero was going to win. Mm-hmm. Vero dominated defensively and dominated offensively. And they put 21 points and probably left two touchdowns out there on the field uh, yeah. because of conditions and, and some of the uh, some slips and some, you know, in a, that happens in a game. Well, we, we, we lost, a, we lost, the, we turned the ball over. There was a right. fumble on one possession. So you right. could argue that might have been a potential scoring drive. Right. And then we had another situation where we went for it on fourth down, didn't get it. So turnover on downs. Yep. And I, and again, I, I, I like that. They didn't have anything wrong with the calls or anything like that. But Vero had the ball to start the second half. Mm -hmm. And I think Fort Pierce Westwood said, listen, at halftime as you, we were in a commercial break, and I said to you, if they shake hands, it's over. Yeah. It's over because that means that the uh, both parties decided it was not worth it. They'd lost two quarterbacks. Their first and second team quarterbacks were out. Yep. Their star running back was out, and their star wide receiver was out. It was right to call it at I that agree. point with the, for them because they got to live to play for their district championship. Mm-hmm. Uh, losing to Vero Beach is not going to hurt them as uh, you know, it, it, not as not as much as a win would have been good. But the loss of playing Vero is going to help you with your point system sure. and because strength of schedule. Yeah. And that's going to make it good for them. And I think Coach knew, Coach Cotel knew that. And I think Lenny Jankowski says, "Look, you know, if you don't want to play no more, we're okay with that too. Yeah. And uh, let's just uh, shake hands." And and the official called the game, gave awarded Vero Beach the win. And it was a um, it, you would have thought we played a full game by the time we got out of there <laughs> <laughs> that night. It was well, yeah, it you, was late. You late. certainly were not going to get any arguments from that broadcasting crew when they said enough was enough because we were looking at it thinking, 
All right, we're at halftime. It's 1030. Uh, we're probably looking at about midnight by the time we get through at our post game show and everything else. Yeah. And um, and I know for you, I mean, you were thinking about the next day with uh, your assignment with UCF having to travel down to FAU. So, yeah, I mean, look, you know, I applaud them for trying to do everything they could to get the game in. I also applaud them for stopping it when they did, because I think all of that was the right call uh, all the way around. And so Vero Beach, like you said, we, we improved to 4-0. and And now we turn our attention to Miami Palmetto. And this is a team we've only played one time. It was a couple of years ago, third round of the playoffs. Um, Miami Palmetto came in with a lot of talent. In the end, Vero Beach lost 10-7. to but really had a great opportunity to win that ball game, but just could not get enough points to win the ball game. Now, this is going to be a completely different Miami Palmetto team. They're coming in here one and three, but they've played some pretty tough competition, GP. Well, they've played Homestead, who's 4 0 right now, and they've uh, uh, played Miami Columbus, who's 4 0, one mm-hmm. of the top ranked teams in the state of Florida. Uh, Homestead is ranked pretty good now in the top 20 in the state of Florida. Yep. So you played some tough competition. Then they played that CAI. Yeah, Clearwater Academy International. International. They're mm-hmm. 2-0. and uh, And we, we've played them a couple years ago. Yeah. So, I mean, they've played some tough. The only – Killian was the only – team that had a losing record they played they were one and three yeah. and they beat them yeah so you got to respect them this was a game paul that we we thought we would win our first four games mm-hmm. we really did you know yeah. i mean and realistically on paper and all i really thought we would win our first four games this was the game i thought we should would be used as a barometer to measure how well we compete with the Miami schools, how well we'll compete in the playoffs, mm-hmm. and how well we will be able to compete possibly with Treasure Coast and our district as the season goes on. This was a game that I had circled and made it as a barometer game. Yeah. Now, I'm not I'm not saying that, well, it's not going to happen. I'm going to say that Miami Palmetto has played a very tough schedule. Yeah. It's a good game to measure your bar. Barometer. Don't don't underestimate this team. Don't underestimate their coaching staff. This is a team that's seasoned. This is a team that looks at this trip to Vero Beach can be the turning of their season. If they can win in Vero Beach, which they already have a couple years ago, they can make and turn their season around with a win here. So Vero has got to be ready to play against a worthy opponent. Yeah, I think they will. I think the coaching staff, I guarantee you, over the weekend emphasized uh, the importance of uh, the, this team that is coming into the Citrus Bowl. Yeah, they're one and three. And yeah, they've played some tough opponents, Gary. Let me just kind of do some breakdowns for you here. So Miami Palmetto right now is averaging like 12 and a half points a game offensively, but they're giving up about 21 and a half points a game versus Vero Beach scoring about almost 50 points a game, and has so far right now one point a game is what they're giving up. So, home turf for Vero Beach. It's a road game for Palmetto. Is Vero Beach favored in this game? Absolutely, and they should be. They should be favored. They're at home. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, they are, um, uh, they're a very worthy opponent for uh, Palmetto. Palmetto's played two really, really good Games, teams, or three really, really good teams, rather. And so add a fourth one to it. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it's going to be a great chance for us to prove to our fans and to ourselves that we can play mm-hmm. against a worthy, big, worthy opponent. And this, sets, this really is a, is a good timing game. I like it because we're, we got to stay focused. Yeah, they're one and three, but you can't look at the records. You got to look at the team, the character, and the coaching staff. And uh, the kind of play, they'll get them ready. They know they're coming to Vero Beach and they want to win a ball game. They uh, they played Columbus last week and you got beat 28 to 10. And uh, they want to come back and they think they can um, possibly, they're, they, they see some things they like and they want to play Vero Beach. They'll come out here fighting. And I and I think they're going to find them get themselves right in the middle of a buzz saw because I think Vero Beach defense is playing some of the best defense 
I've seen it in a long, long, long time at Vero Beach. I'm talking about flying all over the ball, yeah. making tackles. Uh, uh, coverage is outstanding. They do a good job of, st- uh, of stopping the run. They blitz. They stunt well. Uh, this is a game you you know you get to measure your defense, the barometer of your defense, how well they play. And this would be a great game for Tyler Aronson to find out how well he matches up at this the next level as a junior against these guys that come out of Miami. Yeah. Well, Gary, you know, let's talk a little bit about that because, you know, over the last couple of weeks now, there's been a little bit of chatter here and there about, you know, why are we playing such, you know, what is a perceived weak schedule? You know, should we be playing better teams, get ourselves prepared for the playoffs? Of course, now we've got that game that's coming up against Miami Palmetto. So let me play a little bit of devil's advocate here. Let's say Vero Beach loses the game against Miami Palmetto. Does that mean that we should be playing tougher teams early on? Or does it just mean that, you know what, we're good, but maybe we're just not quite to that level yet? Well, let me ask you this. Would you rather be 2-2 two and two and played at some tough teams, or would you rather be 4-0 and, oh and, 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 and develop your program, develop your uh, quarterback into your offense and install in your offense? Not that Lenny went out and scheduled no, these opponents uh, to just strictly for that. This schedule, a lot of these schedules are made up a couple years ahead of time. They want to play a home and away, home and away, or mm-hmm. home, home, but we'll go. Yep. And and when Lenny gets the call, it, it people think that, well, okay, we'll just plug you in here on this day, and, <laughs> right, yeah. uh, and then we'll plug you here. We yeah. don't want to – well, he would have loved to have played, but you got to remember, nobody really wants to come to Vero Beach to play Vero Beach. It's hard to get an opponent – to come and play in Vero Beach because of the record he, he had, what, a 65 straight, what, home game yeah, wins? right. Yeah, so regular why would season you, wins anyway. Yeah, yeah regular yeah, yeah. season wins. Yeah. So why would you want to come in and play Vero Beach at home? Uh, i give you another example. Uh, Treasure Coast with that with the, the, the single wing they run. Yeah. Uh, who wants to come in and play them? Mm-hmm. Uh, nobody wants to play that because nobody they don't have a, an opponent like it, mm-hmm. and they've had success with it. So what does Treasure Coast got to do? They got to go out and book teams that are just unbelievably good, right? To play them, so they all on the road. By the all way, all on the road, and they had to go out, right. and do and play yep. people. So uh, teams out there. So I mean, it's it's not as easy. To go out and schedule, first of all, you got to have somebody who wants to play you True. at home. Yeah. And well, but here's the other side of that, Gary. Should we? And I'm not, I'm not, I, I honest to God, I'm not trying to second guess, you know, scheduling issues here at all. But I know what, what, what fans may ask. Well, why won't, why don't we just go play some more road games instead of trying to play a bunch of home games? If that's the case, should we go out and play some road games to play tougher teams? Well, economically, when your football program draws 5,000 people or sells 5,000 season tickets or yeah. so like that, yeah. and uh, for home games, why would you want to go out and schedule uh, road games every now and then? You have to go out. We were on the Agreed. road. We played Venice. We, mm-hmm. Like I said, we yep. played uh, – uh, uh, up in Virginia against Oscar Smith, yep. one of the top ranked teams there. We're not afraid to go play anybody. It's no, one, and I don't say I don't say that. And in, I know you're in, not as, using as, the word as right. a fear. Not, not a fear. There's no factor. fear. It's just why is the you know I guess the probably the better question is is why is there such a huge emphasis on playing a lot of home games? Well, financial, yeah. It's financially. I mean, they can you can bring in lots of money your athletic program yep and and people really like coming to Vero Beach and that's key word there athletic program not just football it's the, the entire athletics. The athletic program yeah you're right and, yeah. and 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 Lenny has you know they all get to travel well all mm-hmm. the teams they get to they get fed well I mean it's it's all part of it the package when you look through the year mm-hmm. uh it's not that that well, we I thought think- Westwood was if Westwood was undefeated when they played us. Right. You know. Uh, well, so Port- was so was Palm Beach Gardens. Palm Beach Gardens so only was Port lost. Saint they, Lucie. Yeah, yeah, but Palm Beach right. Gardens only loss they have yeah. is to Vero Beach. Correct. So yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, there. You, yes and no. I mean, you could say, well, we need better teams. First of all, 
nobody wants to play Vero Beach. It's hard right. to get them to play Vero Beach. And we need the home games economically mm-hmm. for our fans. We yeah. like having them at home. Yeah. No, I, I 100% agree with you. And I think oftentimes that is something that a lot of the, um, how, would, how do I say this, the casual fan, if you will, doesn't want to admit or address is that there's economics involved in this. I know, you know, yeah, it's high school football and it's supposed to be about fun and all that. And it is, but there's, you know, money is what makes this all work too. I mean, somebody's got to pay for that light bill. Somebody's got to pay for the ground maintenance. Somebody's got to pay for the security and all those kind of things. This is big stuff that happens that we just probably take for granted most times. Absolutely. And and, and again, security for the program and for your opponent and and make sure they they get their buses paid for by Lenny when they bring them in here. Those aren't those he, aren't cheap. Even if you're feeds, talking about school buses anymore, that's not cheap. No, and he they travel with first class and mm-hmm. uh, and they uh, he feeds them a uh, pregame meal and and a postgame meal for them. So yeah. I mean, it's all part of what they did to get a team yeah. to come. And a lot of opponents like playing in Vero Beach because of the crowd. They get a chance mm-hmm. to see. Yeah. They want to see what it's like to see a, a, a home crowd. What did Tyler Aronson say to you when you asked him about <laughs> playing uh, in front of a crowd at Vero yeah. Beach? Yeah. Hey. It was awesome because he'd never played in front of a fan base bigger than probably about three or 400. That was yeah. it. Yeah. You know, and he plays at a school that's got a good football program. You know, Absolutely. But so, when you have that many schools in one town, you know, it, it is going to be divided like that. But yeah. And even when you think about it, Gary, I mean, OK, let's say Vero schedules half the season as road games and they go play, you know, say a Tampa Jesuit or they go down and play, you know, one of the Miami schools or whatever. And, you know, how much money is involved for them to just get buses and whatnot? And then they get there, they get whatever you know, costs may be covered, may not be covered, because not every program can do this. Who wins in the end of that? I mean, honestly, who wins in the end of that? Because, you know, like you said, I mean, ultimately, with with what we can bring to the table financially, it helps not just us, but it helps the other school as well. Well, again, that goes back to Lenny would probably play some more road games if he could get a home and away. Right, a well, home, home and home. A, yeah. a, a, you yeah. know where they get a, right. We got to go on the road for one. They got to right. play one at home. And like you said, that we we've, we've tried to work that. So like a couple of uh, about what was it four years ago that when we played um, Venice. Well, the following year they were supposed to come to Vero. Well, they backed out. Last year we had the season opener against Coco. They were going to play us again this year, but then they backed out because of a schedule conflict. Yeah, they, you know? they he, his, his reasoning, he said, was that, well, we booked two schools at the same time. Right. Or two dates, right. the only day. Right. And, so, and, and he has tried multiple times to get St. Thomas Aquinas to play us, to do, like you said, a home in a home. They just won't do it. They, they refused. They won't come up here and play us up here. We'll, we're willing to go play them down there, but they won't come here. So to answer those casual fans that think we should book a tougher schedule at times to make us a better team, because that what I hear is about, well, look, what it, it hurts you guys when you get to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Not what hurts us when we get to the playoffs. We play fantastic teams. Right. Teams that are better teams sometimes than we are. Right. I mean, you, you, you're going to play an opponent. Yeah. That's going to be better than you, and you you're you're going to lose. Well, you look at what was it two years ago? I think it was Seminole who won uh, two years ago, and the number of players that they had that were Division One prospects were ridiculous. I mean, the kid that was playing quarterback at Seminole the next year is starting at South Florida, yeah, as quarterback. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, and a number of those players are playing at UCF now. Exactly. You know, so I mean, exactly. they had a lot of talent. When we played Deerfield, I mean, they had something like 23 or 24 and their quarterback Division One prospects. The, is the head is the starting quarterback yeah. at Tulane. Three of those guys are playing at Miami right now. Yeah. You know, you know Miami Palmetto two years ago, they got uh, one guy's at Florida. One guy is tearing it up down at Miami playing, you know, Leonard Taylor at, at nose tackle is just killing it. I mean... You know, we thought, oh, man, he's just explosive for high school. No, he's actually explosive at college level, too. So, you know, so you're right. When you get to the playoffs, you're playing the best of the best. Well, you are, and, and it's hard. 
everybody says, well, we can't get to pass a certain round. Well, it's supposed to get harder and harder <laughs> and harder. Right. The, the fact is, is that when you start comparing your a- a- apples to apples a- on, a, on the team, as you just said, you look at the number of Division One players that your opponent has, and you look at what you have, mm-hmm. and you may have one player that might play Division One. You might have two players that might play Division Two, or so. Then you look at a team that's got seven or eight players that are going Division One, and they they just that's just what it hap- That's the way mm-hmm. it happens. Yep. We, you know, it's hard. To, I mean, we're very fortunate to have gotten Tyler Aronson to come and and want sure. to play for Vero yep. Beach because. Of Coach Jay, he's here because of the program. Same thing with Von Dravius Jacobs. I yes. mean, there's another D1 commit uh, that is here because he wanted to play for Coach Jay. All right, we got two guys on this team, or three guys on this team right now are D1 commits, okay? Yep. You got, you got uh, Jacobs. Jacobs, Aronson. Aronson. Campbell. And, and Campbell. Yeah, playing Keyshawn on the Detroit. defensive side. Yeah, yeah, he's going yep. to Detroit. So we got three right now yep. out of a program of just three. Mm-hmm. And and we're going to play probably a team at Palmetto this week that's probably got a handful, about five guys probably, yeah. that are, or, or more or more that are yeah. going to be going to Division One schools. Yeah. That's just the way it is. And, and again, we're, we're, that's why they divided rural – to schools, to mm-hmm. suburban, the word yep. suburban, yep. and metro. Yeah, and uh, we're in the um, we're, we're in the suburban, the suburban. Yeah, and because of our population of our county and all that, they just didn't feel like we can. We, you know, the smaller schools mm-hmm. are the smaller cities. It's harder for them to get the division one where you live in the metropolitan. You go from Palm Beach South. You got five, six, seven million people mm-hmm. living in the state of Florida right down through there. And there's so many high schools, so many opportunities for players to decide where they want to go in the open enrollment. Yeah. So, yeah. And, you know, we beat this one. All hard right. Enough. We can get off the box <laughs> yeah, now. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, all right. So we got, you know, Miami Palmetto coming to the Citrus Bowl on Friday night. Hopefully it's going to be a dry night. I mean, the forecast is looking pretty good right now. So I would, I think uh, from from all the way around, from the players to the coaches to the fans, and certainly the uh, the video crew <laughs> would prefer it to be a dry night. So uh, if we can, uh, you know, have a dry night, I think it's going to be a very entertaining game. I strongly, strongly encourage you to be there. Be there at the stadium because this is just – there's nothing like being at the Citrus Bowl on a Friday night, when, especially when you have an opponent like this. You know it's going to be a great ball game. Make sure to get your tickets. Ticketspicket.com is where you can get your tickets. And, uh, yeah, it's real simple. I've done it a handful of times myself already, bought tickets for some people. It's real easy to do. I would, I would get your tickets and uh, be there for that game because it's going to be a fun time. And uh, we're looking forward to it. Hey, you've been inside the press box along with Gary Paris. I'm Paul Dipton. We'll see you Friday night. As always, go Indians. Thanks for joining us inside the press box. For more, go to ChristianFM.com.